Hi, this is Ash Whitener. And this is Justin Blinko. And welcome back to Liberty Entrepreneurs Podcast, where we explore how to build freedom through the entrepreneurial process. Our goal is to provide you with the tools and mindset needed to create your lifestyle of independence and flexibility. On December 4th and 5th, we went to Mexico City to interview some of the brightest entrepreneurs in the Bitcoin and cryptocurrency space at the Latin American Bitcoin Conference. We left with a number of amazing interviews, and we're really excited to share one of them with you today. Please help us out by following us on Twitter at Liberty E Podcast and Facebook slash Liberty Entrepreneurs. Show notes with links and contact info to everyone we speak with can be found on our website, libertyentrepreneurs.com. Enjoy the show. If you want to save 5 to 20% off of everything at Amazon using Bitcoin and support Liberty Entrepreneurs with no cost to you, check out the show notes at libertyentrepreneurs.com and sign up for an account with purse.io using our affiliate link. Hi, and welcome back to Liberty Entrepreneurs. We are at the Latin American Bitcoin Conference in Mexico City, Mexico. With us is Andreas Antonopoulos. Andreas is very well known in the Bitcoin space. Andreas, would you give us a quick bio? Oh, sure. Um, I'm a computer scientist by trade, uh, and I started in this business when I was 10 years old and I got my first computer and lost myself for six months learning how to program with <laughs> with no tuition or direction, just a little book and a little personal computer. And that day my life changed. And from, uh, you know, that started what is now a 30 some year career um, in, in computers. And uh, it's been the passion of my life. Bitcoin is just the latest incarnation of that for me. Yeah, speaking of Bitcoin, I know that you've built quite a brand. I, I call it the Andreas brand for yourself. You know, you re, you've written a very popular book. You go around speaking at a lot of conferences, and you're very highly regarded in the Bitcoin space. Can you talk to us a little bit about the process about, of building the Andreas brand, when it started, how it started, and when it finally clicked to you like, wow, I'm really on to something here? Well, um, I didn't set out to build a brand. Um, I set out to uh, do the things that I thought were valuable for the Bitcoin community. I, I've been doing public speaking uh, since I was in my teens. And it's a skill that I developed over two decades. And so when I first came across Bitcoin, I was like, okay, I understand the technical stuff. I'm good at public speaking. I can take the technical stuff and explain it to people. That's what I'm good at. That's how I'm going to apply my skill to, to this particular space. And so I started doing that and, uh, uh, you know, at first no one was paying any attention and then suddenly it all snowballed on me and I was as surprised as anybody else. And, you know, I didn't go out to build a brand, but um, there are certain things that um, I value very highly. To me, it's, it's extremely important to have uh, integrity. It's something that is part of my core principles. And so for me, the, the idea was to be a neutral ambassador for Bitcoin, someone who is not doing this because of a personal interest in promoting a product or a company, um, who, who, is, who is doing this not, to, um, not for personal enrichment, but because I really believe that Bitcoin is going to change many people's lives. And out of that, um, I built a reputation for having integrity, which is not that hard. All you have to do is not sell out. Uh, but, uh, you know, if you don't sell out for enough years in a row, eventually people realize you're not going to sell out. And to a certain extent, that is the basis of the brand, which is speak honestly, speak truthfully. Uh, I readily admit that I often make mistakes. I make poor predictions. I say stupid things. Um, and I, you know, I just put myself out there. This is me. This isn't a persona. This isn't a brand. This is me. And people who know me know that I do this, whether I'm in front of a camera or not. I, I'm excited to talk to the, the, the taxi driver on the way to the conference as much as the conference audience at the conference. So Andreas, you mentioned public speaking. A lot of budding entrepreneurs struggle to communicate what they're trying to do and have nervousness on stage. What would you recommend to a new entrepreneur to develop those skills more quickly? Well, I mean, I, I think the first thing is to recognize that public speaking is a completely separate skill set in its own right. And that it's not something that simply happens to you. It's not something that is um, a genetic trait or anything like that. It's like riding a bicycle. And the way you ride a bicycle is by getting on one and trying and falling down a lot. And the same thing applies to public speaking. Just because you're good at something else does won't make you good at public speaking. Um, ironically, 
knowing the content and understanding the content is not that important uh, in public speaking. Sure, it helps if you understand what you're talking about, but more than more than 50% of public speaking is is a performance art. It's it's body language, it's intonation, it's timing, it's things like that. And those are skills in themselves that come from other places. Uh, you know, you can actually study comedy or theater or things like that. And the most important thing you can do for public speaking is speak publicly as often as you can. And then if you do that for 20 years, then it looks easy, right? To give us a benchmark, how many speeches would you estimate you've given at this point? So we know how long it takes to get to where you are. Probably when I first got into Bitcoin, I'd probably already done more than a thousand public talks. Um, I'm I prob at this point. I think I'm getting close to two thousand because I've accelerated my public speaking because of Bitcoin. But that that doesn't mean that it takes two thousand to be uh, good at this. I think um, I did some training courses. I watched myself on video, and I very quickly got a lot better at it. I sucked at first, and everybody sucks at first. So, you know, you get on a bicycle, you've never been on a bicycle before. You're not going to be Lance Armstrong. You're going to fall on your face. So, but very quickly, if you, if you watch yourself on video, if you get feedback from people, if you listen to what they tell you, and if you ask people who do it a lot to give you feedback, you can learn it quite quickly. So you're very passionate when you're speaking and you're very eloquent when you're speaking. What are some other characteristics do you think it takes to be a good public speaker? I think both of those come from honesty. And I think one of the most important things you can do when you're public speaking is, is, is be vulnerable. Be open to vulnerability. Um, a lot of people are scared to show their true self, to, to, to share their ideas for fear of rejection, to, to say what they really think because it might be too extreme or too unpopular or whatever it might be. And instead they try to construct a palatable, audience-friendly persona, but that's not really them. And that disconnect is immediately obvious. When I say something, it's me saying it. It's what I really believe. I, I say it whether I think people want to hear it or not. And, and sometimes it's monumentally stupid and I have to retract it later. But that, that willingness to be vulnerable and, and to expose yourself to that vulnerability is, is, is an absolute requirement for public speaking. Yeah, I know that there's a lot of entrepreneurs that have a lot of great ideas, but they can never get to the point where they can sell their own product. What advice would you give to those people? I know you said get up in front of people at any time you can and speak but you know for the entrepreneur that doesn't necessarily have an outlet right now to get up in front of people maybe he can't find a meetup group or something is are there any recommendations books or people that that public speakers that you found very helpful in your past I don't know. I, I, you can't really substitute for the actual experience. And so there, there, is, there are no 20 steps to becoming a public speaker without public speaking, just like there is no uh, 20 ways to fake authenticity until your audience buys it. You have to come with full authenticity and in front of a real audience and fail until you succeed. Um, comedy is useful once you get a few skills. Um, you can use... I, I watch a lot of stand-up. Uh, I think it's a, it's a beautiful art form that actually informs a lot of what we do in, in public speaking. We're an entrepreneurial podcast and the blockchain and, and Bitcoin in general has opened up an entire new world to people, doesn't matter where you are, the permissionless uh, and borderless aspect yes. of, of Bitcoin. For new entrepreneurs that are thinking of ideas, what would you recommend as a, as a mind frame for you know, what's going to work out, what should you be focusing on today? I think it's, it's really important to inform uh, out of personal experience. The, the best way to find a problem that needs a solution is because you already have that problem, or even better, you are already solving that problem for yourself. Whether it's um, the first company I started in, in Bitcoin, which was getting a, a price quote over SMS because I didn't have access to a good data plan and I needed to see a price quote often. So I built my own server. It helped me and then other people wanted to sign up for it. I needed to store my money somewhere safely. So I decided to build better paper wallets. I built paper wallets. Other people needed them. I sold those paper wallets. Um, with third key solutions, I needed a way to do better multi-sig. We started doing that and then other people needed that same thing. Find what you are needing. Uh, if you need it, others probably need it too. Find a way to solve it that's elegant. Solve it for other people. That's really it. But you have to really be passionate. You don't like go and say, where can I make a lot of money by slapping Bitcoin or the blockchain next to an idea and trying it? Because then that's, that's void of passion. You need to really care about something. In fact, the best businesses happen 
by entrepreneurs who cannot let something go, who cannot sleep at night, cannot eat, cannot function unless they solve this one thing. It becomes an obsession. And that's where the best ideas come from. Very well said. Spoken like a true entrepreneur, Andreas. Thank you so much for your time today. If you'd like to plug anything or give contact details, we'd, we'd appreciate it. Uh, yes. Well, uh, what I'd like to say is that uh, my book, Mastering Bitcoin, is available uh, not just for sale. It's also open source, which is a really important thing for me. And so you can read it for free. If you, uh, if you can't afford to buy the book, download it on the Internet. Uh, you can find as many official sources, but you can also download it as a BitTorrent perfectly legally. And I would encourage that. So uh, Mastering Bitcoin, it's out there. It's available for anyone to read for free. And what's your Twitter handle? A-A-N-T-O-N-O-P. Antonop. Thank you, Andreas. We'll put all that in the show notes. I appreciate you joining us today. Thanks so much. Thank you. Great stuff.